projects, okay? So if we're following the process right, from when it comes up from estimating, there's a box on the sheet that says this, this job is tax exempt. From there, the person that's entering it into a uh, timber mine to start it off, they'll see that it's tax exempt. That's one of the boxes that they check, of the 90 boxes that they check. They gotta make sure that it's tax exempt and click on that. So let me take a step back. Where do you find out where it's tax exempt? Typically on the PO, the purchase order or Right. The, the contract is going to say it. So if it's a public job, they physically issue us a purchase order, work order, and it says tax exempt on it. And that's where you start that one. And when um, they set up the job, they mark it in the setup job, and then that's where you see on your, everyone should be getting a report on Monday, the production schedule. Well, um, make sure you have that document if you're opening it and looking at it, because it gives you the job name, the formal job name and job number, gives you the project address and it tells you if it's tagged. It gives you a lot of information that's pertinent to um, to what you may need at any given point in time. Sorry. So but let's follow this whole thing through. So from there, the project gets started up, then it goes to the APM, they start issuing contracts. Well if we don't start off right at that point, they don't it's not clear in there as they're doing the contracts that as we're issuing the contracts to all of our subs, that is tax exempt, right? One of the things that also as we have that tax exempt, we get the letter from the client dictating that yes, this is a tax exempt certificate letter, whatever you want to call it, and that needs to be kind of at the ready reference and to be able to send that to all of the subs. So then we go do a bunch of work, invoicing comes in, and guess what? There's taxes in there, right? And so I believe there was, was it 3,000 or 30,000 of taxes that we had found? Uh, or what, what's your tally now? Uh, yeah, 3,200. Yeah. So a few weeks ago when that week we caught it on one of the, he caught it on one of the jobs and there was about $3,200 in invoices that we'd been taxed. So now he's going back and doing some back checking to make sure that we haven't been charged taxes on these other jobs. On the, Early one earlier invoices to make sure that that's going on. Well, again, all of that's a cost savings. For lack of a better word, it's money that's, I call it a cost savings. But really, it's not a cost savings. It's just a cost we shouldn't be incurring. And we're incurring it, and the client's not paying for it. So that means it's literally coming off of our bottom line, right? And so that's how that's traced all the way back through. So that's, again, when following the procedures is key and critical, because if we're not, it will have a ripple effect all the way through this whole project. So at times, we have some of these sheets that we fill out, and in the past, and then I'll say it was Heather, why do I gotta fill the sheet out? Why do I gotta do all of this? Why do I gotta do all of this? It drove Sheila crazy, because Sheila's gotta do the job entry in the timber line, and if you don't have it all in there, you can't enter it in. Well, well, I had it on that other sheet, why do I need to put it on this sheet? Well, just, at some point in time, I mean, I don't want to be mean, I don't want to be ugly, I don't want to see it sound crass or whatever the word is, but just follow the procedure. Just follow the procedure. You're in the middle of getting a job done, and many times we're trying to get a job done. A lot of these fast timelines, we just need to follow the procedure. If you want to talk about it when we're out of that time crunch, great. Hey, can you explain to me why i got to fill this out five times? Great question. Let's look at that and see why you're having to fill something out five times. The same time. It's a time and place. There's never a stupid question, but there's the right time and place for the question. Yep. And so part of the question is going to go back to again. We're talking about using technology. We're talking about doing all this stuff. All these forms are online. Copy and paste. If you got to fill out the address five times on five sheets, great. Copy and paste. Right. So at times it's like okay. I, and again, I'm not trying to be rude, but it's there. You use this in a lot of other settings. Why are you letting this instance slow you down? Work always to be more efficient to be able to get these things done. You know, it's very simple, straightforward. And then from there, it, it keeps the whole process going forward, right? Any um, so, so you have a handoff meeting, right? Is that next? Mm -hmm. So when we go through the handoff meeting, again, if we're able to do this, 
in my mind, we need everybody on the project team to be there. The APM, the superintendent, schedule, PM, APM, estimate and all that stuff to be able to go through that. And in, in my mind, it's, again, I don't want to waste people's time, but we've got to have the right people. Just like we said, we've got to have the appropriate uh, subs on jobs. We need the appropriate people in meetings, right? There's plenty of books out there, death by meeting and all this other stuff, right? Well, there's the appropriate timing for that. So the way I like doing these handoff meetings is we start off with the person that's filling out all the beginning inf in information. You know what? They don't need to know how many square feet the building will. No, they didn't need to do that. They don't need to know what color of tile we're putting in and what type of glass we're putting in and all that. So those are details discussed later in the meeting. But to start the meeting off, we all need to know who it is, tax exempt, not tax exempt, all these forms need to be filled out be part of that handoff. And then whether Sheila or Tanya, they can leave the meeting at that point. Go start working on Tim and doing that. Go to the next level of, okay, here's all of your subs that are going to be going on through there. Great. At some point in time, there's key notes that the estimator or the salesperson has made that we need to get communicated. Hey, you've got this date here that there's a field, uh, field day at the school, so you can't do work that day. Or whatever, those types of details need to be handed on. And to be honest with you, you get a certain amount into that meeting, and I'm fine with the estimator leaving. Because then at that point, it's the project team just digging down into the drawings and understanding the whole project. Right. So again, it's about using everybody's time wisely, but you got to have the right people there. We bring teams together so we have clear communications and clear everything, right? And so that's, that's what's key and critical about the handoff meetings. We don't have one for IBC Bank, so if I did something wrong, sorry. <laughs> we don't what? We didn't have one for IBC Bank, and it's already in Timberlake, so. We don't have one. We didn't have a handoff meeting. Right. Right. So, just letting everybody know now. <laughs> well, um, the handoff meeting basically will have schedule values, so we will, and you will end up eventually entering a schedule of values. So, um, a little different with these construction management type jobs, in the beginning we don't have a schedule values. We, we enter them as we go, mm -hmm. as you guys are seeing that, and so things percolate a little bit differently, they, they flow. So, um, which may kind of be a catch point too, we're saying follow the procedure, but there's some things that are, but we're here to guide you through those changes, yes. right? We're just trust us. Fred mentioned that too, he said that if we would do the schedule values as Exactly, and so we appreciate you know undertaking our lead. We're if we're gonna if we're gonna break the procedure. It's gonna be one of the three of us, and we're gonna walk you through how that that should flow. Um, especially with these fast track clients, we just have to do that. And it's actually a selling point. I I use this and I say this all the time. Why us? And they ask me this question. Why you guys instead of the other two local GCs? And I said. Frankly, because we're more agile and we're more hungry. We want it. We want this, we want this relationship. And um, we stay a smaller boutique size so we can cater to their needs. We're able to change our systems just slightly. We're not changing our quality, we're not changing how it is, but we're able to, to change our systems. If this was Manhattan, absolutely not. They would have they would have drawn they would have drew this thing out for 90 days just to get the contract. But because we're flexible, Frey and I were able to attend two meetings with the um, architects first and then the owner, and they were flexible as well. And they made on the spot decisions. The president made a decision and he was done. And the architect said, "Well, do you need to talk to your counsel about that?" He's like, "No, done. We're moving forward." And so they love to see that. That was. We got this job because they said they like our aggressive nature. They like that we want to go out and we want this and we're going to do everything to have it. Um, whereas other people take it for granted. And that ties back into what Frey was talking about um, last month. Of I can't remember if you talked about it in here or it was just a conversation you and I had. But again, what is our niche? Right? So at some point in time, you know, as, as we define ourselves, we, at some point in time, we have to identify what is it that we are really good at and is a really good attractor to certain clientele. Because at the end of the day, not everybody wears Nike, right? 
And so we can't be everything to everybody. You know, it goes back to the, you please some of the people all in, a lot of the time, you can't please all of them, whatever it is, right? Whatever the saying is, well, it's the same thing with it in construction. Hey, we cannot go and build $100 million buildings and, and do um, uh, 50, or $50,000 TI and manage them both well and perfectly because those are two extremes in construction, right? We gotta find out, we'll figure out and better define that. And that's part of what Frey Dima and I have been talking about and stuff. What she just talked about there was one of those things. We're agile. We're not a big behemoth that's got so much bureaucracy that they can't move quickly, they can't, they're not gonna change their procedures for anybody. This is our procedure, take it or leave it, right? We can be agile. We can handle and, 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 and be flexible to do what's gotta happen. And so that's part of that defining that niche that we're in, right? Fred, you want to add anything more? Do you guys have questions over the new roles? And we'll, we'll sit down with you individually and talk to you about this. But um, any questions on um, processes or what's next? So for IBC, we're not having a handoff. I don't know the proper steps after the job is awarded. I guess that's what we will need to do a handoff meeting, and okay. we we'll just have to take Bray's lead. Okay. When you guys are ready to do that. Okay. So if you write that down, Angela, you guys can have a, an offline conversation and figure out when that meeting is. Is what? Because this is actually you're right. This is your first formal handoff meeting. Mm -hmm. So he can train you on. Don't be afraid to ask for clarification or training. I know you kind of, it's a new project and I still think we should go through it together because I'll remember things, Frey will remember things, Josh will remember things, and we can get it nailed out properly and update the procedure binder. So that's a key thing. As we guys are uh, clarifying procedures, let's update that procedure binder. And we do it because one, we forget, right? I, I know I forget a lot lately and I can't, obviously can't get March and May so. Um, <laughs> But it helps us once we write it down. Because um, I get asked questions on what was called the procedure binder. Because at some point I don't remember anymore because I've seen it done 12 different ways. And all 12 ways was right, but it fit that time and place. And so I still do this to Tanya. And I, right, I'll say something and she's like, no, that's not how we do it. I'm like, okay, I don't know. I only remember when I did it. Right, and the last time I was doing Tanya's job was three years ago, or two, actually two years ago. And so, I don't necessarily remember it anymore because we've had changes, right? We've, we've changed the procedures. So if I sat down and did it, I'm gonna do it the way I did it for eight straight years because that's what my body, that's what my hands and body and my mind remember. And then Tanya's really good. She's even corrected Trey and I both on several different items. Mm -hmm. But it's nice because as we evolve, she's been updating. We'll have these conversations, and she literally pulls up that procedure binder, and she starts writing on it. That procedure binder is not a Bible. Write all in it, right? It's write in it and reprint it and make it pretty again. But I always write notes on there to where um, that it helps us understand how to read it better, and we know, okay, we updated it on this day. So when we go back and say, why did we change this? There's a little note there. Right, and then Tanya was remembered, so she explains why we make those changes. So it's good. Change is good. The improvements are good. We're, we're following technology. I mean, this is everything we're doing. Um, we're doing a lot with the marketing and the SEO, and, and Jasmine's been incredible in finding all these new jobs. Um, we were using only I Square Flip. And people finding us. Well, people finding us because no I SEO, think, no IBC bank phone call, or not IBC State bank, Norman. State of Norman. Yeah. No SEO, no State of Norman phone call. It's that simple. Well, and then also like Amy's, she found that on some off website that she discovered. So we said, hey Jess, we find all our stuff on I Square Foot. Well, she took it upon herself. So this is that initiative. This was where that passion. She took it upon herself to go find six other websites that we don't have to pay for and we get information from. Like that, that is what, that's passion. That's what we're looking for is to, 
you know, spend that little bit of time and say, well, what about these sites? So she went and found them and was like, well, I'm finding stuff here. And I'm like, great. Just found a jackpot because 90% of the other GCs are paying their $6,000 a year to I Square Foot to feed them information. So we had one, two, I don't know how many GCs on, the, on the Andes, maybe three at max. I think there's four total. Four? Yeah. Were they out of state? We were the only local one, yeah. Only local GC. Huge home court advantage. Can't be a home court advantage. So, we, we definitely have all the right pieces. <coughs> Super exciting. It's very, very exciting. I think my, my niece like felt my excitement this morning because she texted me. She never texted me. It was the cutest little text me too, she said to me. It was, it was crazy because I never, uh, she never ever texted me, especially in the morning she's getting ready. She said, are you feeling happy today? <laughs> I was like, that was the best thing. And I just, you know, it's something about, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm feeling very happy and I'm feeling very, very motivated. So I hope you guys are feeling happy. Heart unicorn. And, uh, or wait, <laughs> oh, she's a little unicorn and a red heart. Mo emoticon. It's so funny. Sorry, she. Oh no, she's okay. I do have a few questions on the um, maintenance oh, yeah. and warranty stuff. Like earlier on, I mean, I kind of, you know, figuring out the end part or whatever. But earlier on, like, what are my triggers that I need to do something? You know what I mean? Like, I, I just need a lot more explanation on that. So, so I'm not missing <coughs> anything. Can we talk about that offline? Yeah. 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 I, I I've really, already yeah. I've already got the answer for okay. that. It's going to tie in with what Marwa and Tanya are doing. But it's, it's coming back to, okay, so if, if we're not spreading the work between 21 people, we're spreading the work between 15 people, what, what little tweaks do we need to make in that And so none of the work changes, yeah. obviously. We still have to do all the same steps that we <coughs> have been doing for these projects. So, but the, the work that each of us is doing changes. Yeah. Definitely for the better. Uh, yeah, we, schedule. yeah, so we can talk about it more offline, but, I, but, but, but my quick thing to that is that um, as soon as we're awarded a job, we should be working on closing the job out, yeah. right? And that means maintenance, uh, maintenance and operation and warranty stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so since, literally, so you're, you'll be part of these meetings of doing the kickoff meeting and then all that type of stuff. That's your trigger that you need to go and find out what do I need to do for... <coughs> own them in warranty, create that spreadsheet for that job, and you need to be working with Marwa to be gathering that information from the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. and what's going to happen is that out of all of that, you're going to have some that are going to send it to you right away, and some are going to drag it all the way out to the end. And from one company to the next, it's not just, you know, this HVAC company, hey, you're going to buy the, the train SUX 5000, then great. I can give you the warranty and everything on that right now. The next HVAC company is going to go, I'm not going to give you any of that information until it's actually installed and up and running, and then I'm going to give you the owner's manual warranty information on that. Every company is a little bit different. Again, you just got to feel that as you go through every one of those jobs. But literally, you can start gathering all that information, have it electronically ready to go, so that then at the very end of the job, you're ready to hit print, you're ready to put it on a thumb drive, CD, whatever. And transmit it to them based upon whatever their domains are. Some of them are going to say, I need two copies, three copies. Some are going to say, I only want one hard copy, one electronic. One's going to say, I need 10 electronic copies. Whatever that is, that's part of what you're needing to figure out and read these specs and understand what that is. And then to be able to work with Marwa and Tanya as you're going along to be able to be start requesting this information. And you were requesting very early on. And then just keep a little spreadsheet going. Okay, this is in, this is in, this is in. I still need this, I still need this, I still need this. And then you can periodically be sending out re-requests of information and, and then wrap it up. So let's set a meeting for you, the three of you guys to get training from Bray. And um, just know that, especially with the warranties, it goes out in the initial email that Marwa and Tanya send out to the client or to the sub. Mm -hmm. And it'll be slowly trickling in. So you have that time. Mm -hmm. And um, Bray will go through those 
um, those moments of when you, you know the trigger points. Mm -hmm. But the nice part is we can start tying, especially when you see the production schedule, you'll see it go from 30% to 70%. I think that 70% is a good time to say, okay, this is my home run finish. This is my last leg. I, mm -hmm. I, I gotta kick it in. And what do, what do you time that with? Almond and picking up checks. Okay. Because at that point, you can start giving him a list. Mm -hmm. These people are non-responsive. Well, guess what? Don't get paid. He, <laughs> yeah, he holds the key to the, to the, <laughs> it's the best, right? Because he holds the key to the pot of gold, mm -hmm. and all you have to do is give him that list. These are people that are non-responsive. Well, he'll be good that every time someone calls, he'll just go down the list, and they'll ask something from him, and they'll say, by the way, I'll have your check for you on Friday, and I'll need you to pick it up and drop off your warranty at the same time. Yeah, great. So use that as, right, mm -hmm. as the, at the end of the day, we hold all power because we cut the checks. Yeah. And you tie it back down to that, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, they turn into a puppy dog. There'll be a raging bull, and they're going to come after you. And all you have to say, you know, I'll just, just ignore it. Keep your, your running list, and just give it to Amin, and he'll tell you when they're coming to pick up checks. And it's amazing how oh, quickly they, <laughs> they, it flows. <laughs> What'd you say? I said the ops will come in four days ahead. <laughs> right, exactly. They'll say, I'll bring the warranty Wednesday at four. You'll get it All right, we got five minutes. Just once a month at, at our staff meeting. Okay. Uh, what we made report delivered by Friday of the day? On. Project set up 24 hours of mail? On. I'm going to add one to hers. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, after this meeting? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm at daily make balance by 9 a.m. Uh, oh. Front off all commitments by job reports by end of day Wednesday? Meet to approve, manage, pay accounts payable by the end of day Thursday. Um, and also 
also can we make it a little bit further than that? Uh, yeah, we'll talk about it outside of me. Right. Um, job name amount, commitment, and amount of time left by end of day Friday. I'm off on that this week. Uh, metrics verification for whole staff during monthly staff meeting. All binder reports updated and provided by Thursday, end of day. On. CMPS client net promoter score 100% at midpoint and end. I'm off. Growth reviews every four months. I'm on it. Revenue per employee. I'm off. Grow updates complete and uploaded by new and I'm off. Right. Awarded jobs by 20% gross margin by handoff. On. Weekly email to team by Sunday, end of day. Off. Will we simplify the report delivered by end of day Friday? Off. Previous months went by the 15th of each month? Off. The email open book management report, report delivered by noon Monday? Off. Off. Uh, new sales leads four per month? Off. Previous month's financial report to leadership by 20th of each month? Quarterly cultural building event. Off. AR in 30 days. Off. Okay. That's everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you guys for your time. It's one o'clock.